Hello and welcome to our daily devotions here on the Doncaster Methodist Circuit YouTube channel. My name's Tom Reed, and I welcome you to this special time that we share together at the start of our day in the name of our risen Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. So, if you've been with us all week so far, you will know that we've been spending time in John chapter 10, verses 1 to 5. We've been using a commentary by Bruce Milne on the Gospel of John. We've been drawing out contrasts between Jesus the Good Shepherd and the false shepherds depicted by the Pharisees in this passage. The called false shepherds because of their dereliction of duty and their bad attitudes to a blind man who Jesus has just healed. And so on day one, we consider the differences between being genuinely called to a ministry and simply collecting titles. On day two, we considered how the voices we listen to impact and influence our lives. On day three, we marvel that in a world of seven billion people, God knows each one of us by name and loves us and cherishes us as individuals. So before we look at our contrast for day four, let's just remind ourselves again, shall we, of the passage from John chapter 10 and verses 1 to 5. Very I truly, excuse me, I'll start that one again. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. When he's brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. But they would never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him, because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Thanks be to God for his holy word. Amen. Today, the contrast that the commentator notices between the Good Shepherd and the False Shepherds is the direction he provides. In verse 3, he reminds us that the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. He goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. So, Jesus is the guide of his people. To follow him is not to walk in darkness, but to have the light of life. The Pharisees saw their strength lying precisely at this point. Yes, they had the law and its application in their hands, so they were competent to teach people how to live. But they failed to provide guidance, because for them, Living meant following the rules. By contrast, for Jesus, he taught that living means following a master. True, there are rules which reflect his character, but the essence is a living relationship with a living Lord Jesus. John goes on to say in chapter 16, verse 13, that this guidance will be amplified by the gift of the Holy Spirit, who will guide us into all truth. Thinking about these things today it reminds me that of something I've never forgotten, really. Uh, I always remember hearing that phrase, which may have first been said by St. Augustine, when he said, Love Christ and do as you please. I'll just let that sink in a bit and repeat it for you. Love Christ and do as you please. I wonder what you make of that phrase. Do you really think that if you love Christ, you can do as you please? Yet, yeah, if you think about it, it, it is trying to say to you, isn't it, that if you truly, truly love Christ, you could do as you please, because nothing you would do would ever be displeasing 
to the person that you love, that person being Jesus. Perhaps we all have somebody in our lives who, in some way or another, we feel, we fear uh, displeasing or, or hurting. Uh, yet, not because we're scared of them, uh, but because we love them. Uh, we would never, ever, and, and we would only ever uh, want the best for them. So in our relationship with them, we could do as we please, because what would please us the most would always be what is best for them. Whether it's our relationship with someone we love or our relationship with the Jesus we love, isn't it better to live in a way that doesn't have the deadness of legalism, of being in a tit-for-tat relationship, of being in a rules-bound transactional contract? Isn't it better to live in the life-giving relationship that springs from a heart filled with love? So perhaps today, I might think about my relationship with Jesus or my relationship with someone else. As I think about that relationship, I might also think about the times when I behave or speak in a way that veers more towards rule-keeping or transactions. And I might think about how that could deaden or, or flatten that relationship. Or I might also think about those people in my life who seem to love me unconditionally without ever expecting anything in return. And I might want to thank God for just how vibrant and life-giving receiving that kind of love from other people can be. I'm glad to say uh, that I receive so much of that kind of love from so many people. And if I'm thinking about what it feels like to receive this kind of love from other people and from Jesus, could I seek to be inspired to love my Saviour and you in the same kind of way? And so a prayer or confession, today's daily devotion is drawing to a close. And every time I say the words, merciful Lord, would you please respond by saying, forgive us, we pray. Lord, you walk with us through all kinds of terrains in life, mountains, valleys, cliff tops, deserts, wood, town centres, playing fields. But when the going gets tough and life takes on a dark hue, we sometimes attempt to push through it on our own, only to find ourselves weighed down and getting nowhere fast. We may despair of ever being rid of our burdens and seeing life in colour again. Forgive us for these times, for not resting in you, for not trusting in the light of your promises, for not persevering in faith, Merciful Lord, forgive us, we pray. When things are going well and we're galloping on, enjoying life in colourful detail, we often take you and others for granted. Forgive us for not being more aware and appreciative of your company, for not recognising or acknowledging your blessings and guidance. Forgive us for our self-absorption, Merciful Lord, forgive us, we pray. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd who restores our soul. He washes us clean and anoints us with the oil of forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. 
Well, this week is flying by, isn't it? So I'll see you tomorrow for the last day of our daily devotions uh, for this week. But in the meantime, I hope the Lord Jesus will guide you in all the ways of perfect love. God bless. Bye for now.